the first thing that we'll do is look at uh, our production orders. I can start here with this one that's currently in a in-process state, just to look around at that a little bit, so we can see some of the information about it. You know, when this order actually started, when it was planned to start, what recipe we're using. And we got this uh, batch sequence down here, and we see that it's currently in an in-process state. So I can go ahead and create a batch sequence for that. Um, and again, this stuff may be automated. You know, so if if your ERP is already providing this information, you know, that would come through as part of the the integration. And so I can see, uh, you know, this batch sequence, and then I could release that off and send that off to the factory floor uh, to be actually uh, produced. If we look at that recipe, though, right? So we're looking at this ethanol-based solvent. Uh, it might be interesting to understand what that recipe really means, right? And so what we can do is flip over to our uh, our recipe here. Um, and so we have here is our uh, our large batch ethanol solvent recipe. Um, and then we can see that series of operations that we need to go through. Um, so we have a material prep, uh, a premix, a react, a finish, and a package. If we move over to the edge side, um, so this is uh, so we've switched hats here, and now we're looking at this from a, an operator on the shop floor. So we can see that one of these jobs has already started, and maybe we take this next one. This is where our operators are going to uh, start. Uh, jobs and, and spend a lot of their time working. Uh, we can get this job started, uh, and once it gets started, we can uh, start seeing the information that we're collecting along the way. For pre-mixing, you know, what we're going to do is, is focus on some of this consumption. So now we can start seeing how that, that recipe starts working with the jobs that we're dealing with. Um, we can consume uh, a specific batch. Um, so we could go through that bill of material basically and record all of those quantities that we need. And once we get that done, uh, we can do that confirmation. Um, and then we can see uh, that information that is collected along the way, uh, who did it, when it happened. Uh, there's just tons of fidelity behind all this data uh, that allows us for uh, when it comes to reporting and analytics to, uh, to dig a lot deeper. But from an operator's perspective, they're probably done here. So we're gonna let them go ahead and complete this job. Uh, once they complete that, uh, that job completes on and it moves on to uh, the next step and then our operator can come back out and maybe start the next job. Um, if we take a look at uh, the next operation, which would be our reaction step, um, here we have uh, our list of, uh, we've logged onto our reactor work center now, right? Um, if we take a look at that thing, um, so we're probably monitoring things. So if we look, uh, if we come over, you know, we can see our operator uh, has access to, in this case, the temperature of that reaction chamber that uh, that we're, we're running that through. Uh, from our operator's perspective, though, what he needs to do is maybe collect some data, right? And so if he comes out here um, and does an inspection, um, what that does is that triggers an inspection that needs to be performed. The next thing that we'll take a quick look at here is our finishing tank. We have that list of, of, of jobs that uh, that are either currently in process or need to be ran. Um, and again, we already have one out here that's running. Uh, and then we'll take a look at our last piece here, which is really our, our bottler, um, where we have, again, a different set of actions that are running. You know, recording consumption is not so different than before of, uh, um, you know, are we consuming into a uh, the batch that's being produced, which is usually probably the default, or do we want to specify a specific batch and how much do we want to do? So maybe we'll produce another 35 along the way. Um, now, all of this information, of course, is going into our um, uh, our analytics piece as well. Um, you know, we're monitoring things like our our downtime. So, if this machine goes down for some reason, you know, we have you know what reasons that we might go down for. In this case, our bottler only has one a broken bottle, so we can move that uh, that uh, bottler into a uh, a not running state or a stop state. Um, and if we put it back into a running state, uh, we can see that information. So we can see those uh, downtime events that we have and how long that we were down for and why. So if I come over to our um, analysis, we can look at this capper that's out here running. I got some good data out there. Um, so we have, you know, this capper that's out there running that's been collecting, uh, you know, data along the way. You know, we ran from April till May um, and we had a certain amount of production that we were expected to produce. We can see how much we actually did produce and how much of that was good. And we can see the downtime events. So a very typical kind of uh, uh, OEE um, set of KPIs you, you might expect.